by Jove, but they're bad tonight, said Doogie, running a grimy paw across his forehead. Perfectly ferocious, said Parahandy, slapping his neck. This fair beats Beaumore, and Beaumore is namely for its midges. I never saw the brutes more desperate. You would actually think they were whistling in one another, crying, Here's a clean sailor, and he has near a collar on. Gather a boot, boys. Oh, crevins, whimpered Sonny Jim in agony, dabbing his face incessantly with what looked suspiciously like a dishcloth. I've seen midges afore this, but they never had spurs on their feet afore. Yeah, I wish it was back in Glasgow. They can say what they like about the Clyde, but anywhere above Bolin, I'll guarantee you'll no be eaten alive. If they found a midge in Glasgow, they would pit it in the Kelvin Grove Museum. MacPhail, his face well lubricated, came up from among the engines and jeered. <laughs> midges never bothered me, he said contemptuously. If you had been with me on the west coast of Africa and felt the mosquitoes, it wouldn't be about a wheen and that she would make a sang. It's all a hallucination about midges. I can only speak about them the way I fun them, and they never did me any harm. Perhaps it's no midges that's bothering you after all. Ah, perhaps no, said Parahandy with great acidity. Perhaps it's hummingbirds, but the effect is just the same. You'll read in the scriptures yonder about the ant going for the sluggard, but the ant is a perfect gentleman compared with the midge, and from all I ever heard of the mosquito, it'll no stab you behind your back without a word of warning. Look at the Mandugi's face, quite black. You would never think it was a Sunday. It was certainly pretty bad at the quay of Aracher, but the evening air had come out as it seemed, the midges of all the highlands. They hung in clouds above the vital spark, and battened gluttonously on her distracted crew. "'When I was at the mouth of the Congo River,' began the engineer, but Parahandy throttled his reminiscence. "'The Congo's no to be compared with the west of Scotland when you come to insects,' said Parahandy. "'There's places here that's just deplorable whenever the weather's the least bit warm. Look at Tinnebroch!' They're that bad there, they'll bite their way through corrugated iron roofs to get at you. Take Kleinder again, or, or any other place in the Gaerloch, and you'll see the old ones leading run the young ones, learning them the proper grips. There is a special kind of midge in Dervig on the Isle of Mull that has all the points of a Poltalloch terrier, even to the black nose and the cocked lugs, and sits up and barks at you. I was once gathering cockles in Collinsay. I could be dean with some cockles, said Sonny Jim. I feel like a cockle when it comes near the Glasgow Fair. The best cockles in the country is in Collinsay, said the captain. But the people in Collinsay is that slow they canna catch them. I was once gathering cockles there, and the midges were that large and bold, I had to throw stones at them. It's a pity you hadn't a gun remarked MacPhail uh, with sarcasm. "'A gun would be no much use for the midges of Collins Hay,' replied the captain. "'Nothing would discourage yon fellows but a blast of dynamite. What was there on the island at the time but a genuine English tourist with a capital red kilt and man, but he was green. He was that green the coos of Collins Hay would go mooing along the road after him, thinking he was grass.' He was one of them English gentlemen that'll be drinking ginger beer on all occasions, even when they're dry. And him being English, he had seen next to nothing all his days till he took the boat from West Loch Tarbert. The first night on the island he went out in his kilt and came back in half an hour to the inns with his legs fair pitiful. There is nothing that the midges like to see among them better than an English tourist with a kilt. The very tops was eaten off his stockings. That's a fair stretcher, Peter, exclaimed the incredulous engineer. It's as true as I'm telling you, said Parahandy. Anyone in Collinsay will tell you. He had one of them names shed in the middle, like uh, Fitzgerald or Seton Kerr. That'll prove it to you. When he came into the inns with his legs just fair beyond redemption, he didn't even know the cause of it. 
It's the ginger beer that's coming out on you, says John McDermott, that had the ends at the time. There is not a thing you can drink that is more deleterious in Colin Say. Nobody takes it here. Oh, and what in the world do they take, said the English gentleman. Ah, the water of the mountain well, said John, and while's a drop of wholesome British spirits. Ah, there's some that doesn't care for water. Uh, but the English gentleman was eccentric, and nothing would do for him to drink but ginger. And they took him down to a shed where the fishermen were barking nets, and they got him to bark his legs with catishu. Ah, if it's green he was before, he was now as brown as a trammel net. But it never made a bit of odds to the mudges out in Collinsy. I tell you, they're no slack. They're no slack here neither, wailed Sonny Jim, whose face was fairly wheeled by the assailants. Oh, Mechty, I think we would be far better ashore. Not a bit, said Doogie, furiously puffing a pipe of the strongest tobacco, in whose fumes the midges appeared to take the most exquisite pleasure. There's no a place ashore where you could take shelter from them, it being Sunday, he added significantly. I'm going ashore only way, said MacPhail, removing all superfluous lubricant from his countenance with a piece of waste. It wouldn't be midges that would keep me lolling about this old hooker on a fine night. If you've had some experience of mosquitoes, them's the chaps for you. It's mosquitoes that spread the malaria fever. They watched him go jauntily up the quay, accompanied by a cloud of insects, which seemed to be of the impression that he was leading them to an even better feeding ground than the vital spark. Holy frost! he exclaimed, jumping on deck. I never felt midges like that in all my days afore. They're in billions of billions. Tut, tut, said Parahandy. You're surely getting off a timid, MacPhail. You that's so well acquaint with them mosquitoes. If I was a travelled man like you, I wouldn't be bait to a wheen of healing midges. They're no in it anyway. Just imagination, just a hallucination. Ah, you mind you told us. There's nae hallucinations about them chaps, said MacPhail, smacking himself vigorously. Not at all, said Sonny Jim. Not at all. If there's only hallucinations about them, they have it sharpened. Oh, <laughs> it's cruel, that's what it is. Fear cruel. I promised I would go and see MacRae the nicht, said the engineer, but it's no safe to gang up that key. This is yen of the times I wish I was a smoker. That tobacco of yours, Doogie, would surely fricked away the midges. Not one bit o' it, said Doogie peevishly, rubbing the back of his neck, on which his tormentors were thickly clustered. I'm beginning to think myself they're partial to tobacco. It maybe stimulates the appetite. By, aren't they the brutes? Look at them on Jim. With a howl of anguish, Sonny Jim dashed down the forecastle hatch, the back of his coat pulled over his ears. Is there Nathan a chap could day to his face to keep them off? asked the engineer, still solicitous about his promised visit to Macrae. "'Some people will be saying paraffin oil is a good thing,' suggested the captain. "'Ah, but that's only for Ross images. "'I'm thinking the Aracher midges would maybe consider paraffin a treat. "'And I've heard of others trying whisky. I mean, rubbed on outside. Oh, "'I've never had enough to experiment with myself. "'For by, there's none.' I wouldn't care to go up to Macrae's on a Sunday, smelling of either paraffin oil or whisky, said MacPhail. Oh, of course not, said Parahandy. What was I thinking of? Macrae's sister wouldn't like it. And he winked broadly at Doogie. Oh, he'll be taking a bit of a donder with her after the church goes in. Oh, gee her my best respects, will you? A fine, big, bouncing girl. <laughs> a splendid form. You shut up, said MacPhail to his commander, blushing. I think I'll give my face another sign with plenty of saft soap for it, and mack a bringe across to MacRae's afore the effort wears off. He dragged a pail over to the water beaker, half filled it with water, added a generous proportion of soft soap from a tin can, and proceeded to wash himself without taking off his coat. Ah, you need the mind to keep on your cap, said the captain, grimacing at Doogie. Me mal no see ye. He's been calling on MacRae a score of times, Doogie, and the sister hasn't found out yet he's bald. Oh, mercy on us! Did you ever in your life see such midges? 
I'm past speaking about him, said the mate, with hopeless resignation. What is he keeping on his bonnet for? He's at bald, unless he keeps it on when he's washing his face. He doesn't know where to stop, said Parahandy. The want of the hair's an awful depredation. But even these drastic measures failed to render MacPhail inviolate from the attack of the insects whose prowess he had underestimated. For the second time he came running back from the head of the quay, pursued by them, to be greeted afresh by the irony of his captain. To the solid wall of them up there, he declared, rubbing his eyes. Isn't it annoying, said the captain, with fallacious sympathy. Mima will be weary waiting on you. If there was a druggist's open, you might get something in a bottle to rub on. Or if it wasn't the Sabbath, you might get a, a can of syrup in a grocer's. Syrup? said the engineer inquiringly, and Parahandy slyly kicked Doogie on the shin. Oh, there's nothing better for keeping a wall of midges, he explained. You rub it on your face and leave it on. Ah, it's a pity we have no any syrup on the boat. Sonny Jim had a tin of syrup last night at his tea, said the engineer hopefully. Ah, but it must be the genuine golden syrup, said Parahandy. No other kind'll do. Sonny Jim was routed out from under the blankets in his bunk to produce syrup, which proved to be of the requisite golden character, as Parahandy knew very well it was. And five minutes later, MacPhail, with a shining countenance, went up the quay a third time, attended by midges in greater myriads than ever. This time he beat no retreat. Oh, stop you, said Parahandy. When Mima Macrae comes to the door, she'll think it's no an engineer she has to call on her, but a fly cemetery. <laughs>